Hey, it's Kat again. What we're doing is we're looking now at keyboard events. So we've looked at events before. We've looked at Action, action Listener, which allows us to um, generate events based on user interaction with form components, such as text fields and buttons. We've looked at Mouse Events, which reacts to mouse interactions, such as pressing the mouse buttons and releasing them and clicking them. Now we're going to look at Keyboard Events. This is a little bit easier to explain in Straight In Eclipse, which is why there are no drawings today. So first of all, if we want to use a new type of event, we must import java.awt.event.star. Uh, that's a lowercase e. Yeah, it's done a bit of auto finishing for me, which I didn't want. Okay, then I also need to implement key listener and unlike last time I'm actually going to remember to add in the listeners so one of the first things I need to do is put in this dot request focus and the purpose of that is that it makes the applet for active components for key events then I need to add key listener and based on what I know I'm putting in my applet, I'm just going to set the size here to 300, 200. And it's also giving me an error here. And as we've seen with the other listeners, there are several methods that are associated with the listener. And in this case, we need to put in three more methods, key typed, key pressed, and key released. So I happen to have typed these earlier, so I'm just going to paste them in. So I've got public void key pressed with a key event E, public void key released with a key event E, and public void key typed with a key event E. Now there are some things associated with the listener and with the key events that allow us to do different things. So some methods associated with a key event are get key code, and that gives us the number or the key code that's associated with each of the different keys. Then our action keys we can use v underscore the name, so v, vk underscore space or vk underscore up, vk underscore down, and it allows us to uh, respond to those different keys. We've also got key text, get key text, and that will translate a number. So if we get the key code for a key that was pressed and we pop that in the brackets there, it will then tell us what the text is that's on that key as opposed to just the key code because for us, let's say for example the key code was 79, I might not know what 79 actually is on the keyboard. So get key text based on the key code will give me that, give me the actual character. We can also get key char, which will give us the generated character of the type char for the key typed. We've got is alt down, is meta down, is control down, and is shift down. I haven't used those at all. I've mostly used the ones up the top. So we're going to create a little applet that's just going to show us how we would use some of these methods to get some feedback going. So to allow for feedback, I'm going to create a few variables here. I'm going to have int number, and that's going to allow me to what I'm going to use it for is to count the number of keys that have been pressed just so I start getting some feedback. Um, I'm going to have um, a character that I'm going to use to tell me what character has been pressed on the keyboard and I'm going to use some strings. So I'm going to say string one, just my dispelling string two. Now these are not sensible string names but then the piece of code that I'm providing is not particularly functional. It is just um, demonstrating how to use the different methods. Okay, so I've just got four strings there. Now in Paint, the feedback I'm going to provide is along the lines of how many keys have been pressed and what key was pressed and what key was released, which action key was pressed, all that kind of jazz. So I'm just going to pop in some feedback here.
So my first one is going to be number of keys pressed. My second one will be telling me what character was pressed. And so that one will have the key char. Then I want to see which key was pressed. And that one is going to correspond to string one. Then I'm going to check which key was released. And that will correspond to string four. I'm also going to ask which action key was pressed. And that corresponds to string two. And the last one, I'm just going to print out string three. Okay, now if I run this, uh, it, there will currently be no interaction, but I just want to see what my screen looks like. So I've got a nice little layout there and in a moment when I put in the functionality in the different key methods, um, this should start giving me some feedback. So for example, let's start with key pressed and let's increment the number every time a key is pressed so we can see how many keys get pressed. Let's set string one to e dot get key text for the key that was pressed, which we know we need to use get key code. With method names, what you'll find is if they're made up of multiple words, like get key text, the first word is always with a lowercase letter, and every word thereafter starts with a capital. Um, it's just a trend you'll start to notice. And it's it's a good one to use. All method names, if you look in it, paint, key pressed, key released, key typed. All method names start with a lowercase. And all objects, key, sorry, key event, graphics, string, all objects start with a capital. Some good little things to remember there. Um, okay, what we also might do in, in key pressed is we might check um, if the up key is being pressed. So if get key code is equal to VK underscore up, oh sorry, E dot VK up, we'll set string two to say that up key was pressed. We'll just say up key. We'll copy that and let's do something the same but to test if the enter key was pressed. So with the key code you must have all capitals and we might say enter key there. Oh semicolon. Okay and as we know if we don't have repaint our screen won't update with that new information. So remembering that we've only put data into key pressed, let's run it and see if we get some responses. No, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. So I needed to press the, the mouse to get that trigger to happen. Okay. So we're not getting any responses in this one, in this one, or in this one because we haven't used anything yet. Let's try enter key. And the up key, we know we've dealt with that one. Okay, so the key pressed is showing me which arrow I've pressed. So this one, I'm pressing the numbers on the number keypad. All right, let's have a look at putting some things into key released and key typed. So in key released, I'm going to do the same as this one, where I'm going to get the key text for the key code except I'm going to set that one to string four. And of course I'm going to repaint. And in key typed, I'm going to set key char to T 
to the get key text. No, I'm not, sorry. I'm going to set it to e dot get key char, get key character. So find out what the character was and set that to key char. And then I'm going to say if that character was equal to x, set string 3 to say the key lowercase x was pressed. And then of course we will repaint. So as I said, this code you certainly wouldn't use it for any of your programs, but it's just in practicing how to use these methods like get key char and knowing what it's going to give us back and get key text and get key code and knowing what it's going to give us back. How we can check for enter presses and for different arrows. Certainly with gaming, checking for the arrows is a good one. So let's just run that and just click somewhere on the screen once. So I've got the up key, so key pressed and key released. So when you look at key pressed and key released, when I press something, pressed happens and as I release it the other one catches up. This one tells me what key is pressed. Okay, so I got that additional feedback of the lowercase x was pressed. Okay. So when you're using a keyboard listener, you must import the event, implements key listener, put in key pressed, key released, and key typed. And you need to request focus and add the key listener. After that, you can use all these different little methods to figure out how to get your game going or your program going. So I'd recommend you have a have a bit of a play with keyboard events and perhaps have a look at the tutorial on the link and work through that exercise to become a bit more familiar with the key events.